In the 1990 NBA Draft, Jerry Krause, the GM of the Chicago Bulls, would draft Tony Kukoc with the 29th overall pick. Many might have thought that this was a wasted pick as Kukoc would not play in the NBA until three years later. What? Most NBA fans forgot about the pick quickly, as the Chicago Bulls had their core guys and would go on a three-peak championship run. That is until this guy, Michael Jordan, would announce his retirement right before the season was about to start in October. Kukoc was ready to play in the 93-94 season alongside with Jordan, but on the day of his arrival in Chicago, Jordan had announced his retirement. So just how good was this Tony Kukoc guy, and why was Jerry Krause so obsessed with him? It was as if Jerry would blow up half the team just to sign him. Most of the players were on edge of their own job, knowing Krause was trying to sign him for big money. While the Bulls were winning championships, Krause was working in the background like an evil genius doing what he does best, making sure the Bulls are ahead of the curve. Kukoc was Krause's diamond in the rough, and would be a key component in the second three Repeat. This is the story of Tony Kukoc in the NBA. Kukoc grew up in Croatia and was playing professional basketball at the age of 17. Standing at a height of 6 feet 10, he was very agile for his height and could play multiple positions on the floor. Where he excelled at most was the point guard to small forward positions, as he loved bringing up the ball and had very good court awareness. He was able to see the floor and pass well. He shot at a very high percentage and had good shot selection. So what was all the hype about this kid from Europe? Well, for one, his nickname in Europe was the Croatian Sensation and White Magic, a reference to Magic Johnson. And two, he was 6'10", bringing up the ball. And three, well, this. Basically, he never lost from the time he was 17 to the time he came into the NBA, not counting his meetings against the 1988 U.S. Olympic team and 1992 Olympic Dream Team, where he still won silver medals. Three years after being drafted, he would sign and play with the Bulls. Tony was a very humble player. When he arrived in Chicago, Jordan Pippen were not very fond of him, as there was always tension between Kraus and the Bulls players. They called Tony Kukoc Kraus's guy, and they didn't like him at first. So much so when they played Croatia in the 1992 Olympic gold medal game, both Pippen and Jordan argued who would guard Kukoc. They would take turns playing defense on Tony, face guarding him full court, and the mission was not to let him score. Jordan would go on record saying that at the time we were not playing against Kukoc, we were playing against Jerry Kraus. It was obvious that it was going to take some time to earn the respect. Kukoc's rookie year with Jordan no longer in the picture would be an above average season for any rookie. He would start to play the four spot and had never done so previously in Europe. Although it took some adjusting, he helped his Bulls to an impressive 55 and 27 record without the best player in the world. Kukoc would come off the bench playing 25 minutes a game averaging almost 11 points, 4 rebounds and 3.5 assists a game. While during the playoffs his numbers were roughly the same. This would be enough to make the NBA all rookie second team. The following year, two things happened. Kukoc would increase his production, and Michael Jordan came out of retirement at the beginning of March in 95. Kukoc averaged 15.5 points a game, but took a backseat after Jordan came back, although he would have only averaged a point more before Jordan returned. Halfway through the season, Kukoc would be added to the starting lineup and fit right in with the Bulls. Even having to adjust with Jordan now in the lineup, the Bulls went the remainder of the season 19-5, placing 5th in the Eastern Conference that year. Although they would exit in the second round to Young Shaq in the Orlando Magic, the following year would be completely Completely different. In the 1995 and 96 season, Kukoc would take a seat on the bench. This was something many European players would be afraid of, coming off the bench, playing Lebanon minutes, and wasting their prime years when they could be in Europe destroying those leagues, which could be considered minor leagues, but they would be getting paid well. But Kukoc wouldn't fall victim to just another overhyped player who didn't amount to anything. He made the most of that year and would end up winning the sixth man award, averaging 13 points. 4 rebounds and 3.5 and assists, all in 26 minutes of play. The Bulls would go on to win their fourth title, and most importantly, he would gain Jordan and Pippen's respect. And I guess I forgot to mention that the Bulls won 72 games that year during the regular season, which would be the best record ever. Kukoc had stated that he had felt that the best lineup during the Bulls run was him, Ron Harper, MJ, Pippen, and Dennis Rodman, as there was roughly 3 inches that separated them in height between the 5 players, and they could switch everything on defense. On offense, Jordan, Pippen, or Kukoc could post up. I think we could call Jerry Krause a genius. Anything more from Kukoc would be a bonus at this point. Tony would go on the following two seasons to 3 Pete with the Bulls and put up basically the exact same numbers during the regular season. As the Chicago Bulls dismantled after the 97-98 season, Kukoc was their go-to guy now. Although halfway through the 50-game season, he would suffer an injury due to back spasms. He would battle this injury throughout the season and it would completely kill the momentum in his point production for the team. The Chicago Bulls did not make the playoffs that year. Surprise, surprise. 
The Bulls would trade the 31-year-old Kukoc to the Philadelphia 76ers the following year. I think Kraus was really banking on Kukoc being their guy, or maybe not. He is a bit of a genius. Who knows what he was thinking? Unfortunately, it wouldn't last long with Allen Iverson and the 76ers as he bounced to Atlanta for a couple years and finished off his career with the Milwaukee Bucks. He wouldn't have much of a starting role with those teams as he averaged around 20 minutes a game while also missing games for all sorts of injuries now from his back to his hip after leaving the Bulls. Tony may be one of the most underrated players in NBA history. He was quiet and never spoke up for himself as he often allowed his game to do the talking, hitting several game winners over the years. Kukoc averaged 11.6 points for his career. That average would have been higher if, but if you ask him, I'm sure he would have told you he was in the league for one or two years more than he should have been. On top of that, Kukoc was a sharp shooter, shooting 49% for his career from the field. His three-point percentage was 33%, but he only averaged around two and a half attempts in an era that didn't shoot too many threes. He definitely helped pave the way for international stars that we see in the league today. Kukoc could have easily came into the league, played for another team, and averaged 20-plus points a game, seven rebounds, and five assists. But his time with the Bulls were valuable to him and were his greatest memories of his basketball career.